Let's take a step back in time. How far back? Oh, how about the 19th century? That way we can visit the boardwalks of Coney Island and Atlantic City by day and night. Keyword here, boardwalk. You're going to Disney's Boardwalk Inn to decide if this swankified resort is worth all your pennies put together or if maybe you should save your money and go elsewhere. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Deciding on a hotel for your Disney World trip can be overwhelming to say the least. There are a lot of questions you gotta ask yourself. Is this hotel's location gonna be close to the things I wanna see? Are the amenities something I'm gonna care about and use often? Is the theme something that I'll vibe with? Is the price too hefty for what it's worth? And most importantly, in my humble opinion, is the food good? So many questions, so little time to decide. So how about I help you out by answering all these questions about one of Disney's most popular hotels, Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort. Okay, Disney's Boardwalk Inn and Boardwalk Villas, that's the Disney Vacation Club part of the Boardwalk Inn, opened in the summer of 1996. This hotel is located in the Epcot Resort area with incredibly close proximity to the park itself. And by incredibly close, I mean you can literally walk to Epcot and on into the World Showcase from here pretty quickly. You can also walk over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. The resort itself is surrounded by a sprawling boardwalk. It also hugs the sparkling waters of Crescent Lake. And full disclosure, this was my dream resort when I first started going to Disney World. I would ride on the boat by the boardwalk and think someday maybe I'll get to stay there. Um, now I've stayed there plenty of times and I can't wait to tell you all about it. The architecture of the hotel was completed by Robert A. M. Stern Architects, the same group that oversaw Disney's Yacht and Beach Club Resorts and the Walt Disney World Casting Center. They also helped create Celebration, that nearby Disney community where people can actually buy a house and live on Disney property. At least they could until Disney stopped running it. The boardwalk is one of Disney's deluxe resorts, meaning it's going to offer up more luxurious stays with lots of amenities. Some of the amenities at Boardwalk Inn include several dining options, numerous complimentary transportation selections, and overall spaciousness in the rooms. But with that deluxe title comes a deluxe price tag, which we're going to talk about more in depth a little later on. Now theme for the boardwalk, like I mentioned, it's inspired by old school style boardwalks you can find in Coney Island in Atlantic City. To add an extra layer of pizzazz to the theming here, you can find fun little extras like sideshow games and classic carnival foods like cotton candy and funnel cakes, you know, the good for your soul type stuff, at select side kiosks. The boardwalk provides you with the best of both ambiances. On the one hand, those lakeside views and nighttime boardwalk strolls are peaceful and romantic for Disney couples looking for a romantic evening out. On the other hand, the different games and snacks and creative recreational activities that the hotel offers are great for kids of all ages. But it's not just what's on the outside that counts, so what's on the inside matters just as much if not more. The guest rooms at the Boardwalk Inn reflect that old-timey 19th century feel of the hotel. And some may say they feel just as outdated. Yeah, depending on your style preference, this style could be seen as something positive and vintage, or it could be seen as something negative and super outdated. If you're traveling with younger kids, you might lean toward the latter, especially when it comes to the lack of characters and colorful, whimsical Disney essences in the rooms. The outdatedness of this resort is about to be revamped. Yeah, recently Disney announced five major changes that'll be coming to this hotel in the not so distant future. One of those changes being a light and airy remodel for the Boardwalk Resort rooms. On top of major room renovations, the Boardwalk's lobby is also gonna get a makeover that'll bring the seaside breeze right inside. That's straight Disney PR right there. But wait, there's more. Disney's Boardwalk Inn is also receiving three new places to grab food and drinks including a coffee bar, which is going to be off the lobby, a sandwich shop, which is going to replace the Boardwalk Bakery, and the Cake Bake Shop by Gwendolyn Rogers, which apparently is a chain and has lots of cakes. As of this video's release, we're not sure when these updates and additions will start happening, but we do know that that Cake Bake Shop is projected to open in 2023. After the room renovations happen, who knows, we might see more characters and whimsy start popping up in the hotel decor. That's kind of what they've been doing over at the Contemporary and the Polynesian revamps, so we'll wait and see. And that's exciting for the kids to see. Wow, they may say, is that Maui on the wallpaper and Mater above my bed? So cool. Currently, you're not going to get that same wow factor from the kids when it comes to the rooms at Boardwalk. No Timon and Pumbaa and the shower curtains here, I'm afraid. Right now, the lobby of the Boardwalk is elegant, but remains true to the resort's theme with its vintage decor, like that wooden roller coaster model, the mini statue of Lucy the Elephant, which, fun fact, is a real-life building shaped like an elephant located in one of the coastal areas near Atlanta. City, and of course those infamous nanny chairs. Seriously, are we really bringing these back up again? Every time 
to look at them. I have nightmares for weeks and probably so do you. Fine, there are four of these nanny chairs in the resort, two of which you'll commonly find flanking the fireplace located in the lobby and two upstairs or somewhat downstairs, but their terrifying smiles and soulless eyes aren't the only thing giving us the heebie-jeebies. These chairs move like they trade places a lot. Pretty sure it's just the cast members moving these horror movie worthy props around, but I haven't seen this happen with my own eyes, so the verdict is still out. The chairs might just be haunted and only time will tell. So why do these chairs exist? Well, great question, but they actually do serve a theming purpose. These unsettling chairs are cast from 19th century carousel seats, which used to give nannies a rest while the kids went for a spin on the merry-go-round. And so they're basically replicas. But if you will humor me for a moment to talk about the nanny chairs for one more second, they all do have names. If you look on the back, they have names. I've been told that they're names of cast members' children, but I don't know. Their names are Todd, Paul, Alex, and Carrie. Okay, now that we've talked about the nanny chairs for quite some time, which is critical and important whenever you talk about the boardwalk, it's time to talk price. You know how I said the boardwalk was kind of like my dream hotel, like I couldn't wait to someday be able to stay there. And the main reason why I couldn't is because it's so expensive. Yeah, as cool as it'd be to stay at Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort in exchange for a handful of carnival tickets, that is not the case. You're gonna have to fork over big bucks to stay here. Guests can choose from a few different room options. You've got the regular guest rooms, club level rooms, and the Disney Vacation Club villas. When it comes to regular rooms, stays are gonna generally cost between $550 and $700 per night during Disney World's off-peak season, which is pretty much what's to be expected when you're booking any of the regular rooms at the Disney Deluxe Resorts. The different view options for these rooms include standard views, garden views, or water views, with standard being the least expensive and water view being the most expensive. On average, the cost of a garden view room is about $20 more than a standard view, which might be worth it for people looking for a more peaceful surrounding environment, not just looking at like the parking lot. Now, each of these rooms can sleep up to five people with bed options varying between king or queen size beds, plus an additional day bed. Club level rooms during the same off-peak time of year can cost around $900 a night for the standard room and just above $1,000 a night for the deluxe room. Now from time to time, Disney will of course note special offers and discounts. You can find those over on the special offers tab on the Disney World website or go ahead and sign up for the DFB newsletter. We will always tell you about any discounts that come out on Disney hotels. The link to sign up is right down in the description. Now let's look at those top of the line club level rooms for a second. Club level rooms come with a plethora of added amenities like access to the Innkeepers Club. Now the Innkeepers Club is a Disney Vacation Club lounge where complimentary refreshments are served throughout the day, including continental breakfast, afternoon snacks, and an array of cheese, wine, and desserts in the evenings. Once in a while they even have a chef in there kind of whipping up homemade omelets or putting together some sort of pasta dish at night. So that's really cool. There are legit food items in here, so you might be able to save a little money on restaurants if you stay club level. Guests staying at the club level also get personalized concierge service and access to the hotel's Muscles and Bustles Health Club. Yes, that's really what it's called. The standard club level rooms can sleep up to five and the deluxe rooms can sleep up to six. These rooms are a little bit larger with an extra area attached to the room and the extra area includes a sleeper sofa, second TV, extra seating, and a coffee table area for lounging during the day. Now Disney's Boardwalk Villas, the vacation club part of the hotel, has over 500 units featuring deluxe studios and villas. Despite being part of the Disney Vacation Club, these rooms can be booked by anyone. Just keep in mind that recently, these DVC villas have been booking up fast since many Disney Vacation Club members have had to reschedule their vacations from that 2020-2021 cancellation. If you're having a hard time booking a room, try narrowing the scope of your stay to a couple of nights instead of making your DVC stay a week-long endeavor. The deluxe studios cost between approximately $680 and $920 per night, depending on the view you choose. These rooms sleep up to five people, but the sleeping arrangements do involve a sleeper sofa and a pull-down bed, along with one regular bed. The deluxe studios aren't exactly the epitome of privacy. All the beds reside in the same common area, like any average hotel stay, so don't expect much privacy here from the kiddos. And what I can say about the deluxe studios is that they're a bit more spacious, so aside from the zero privacy, you will still have space to spread out. These rooms include amenities like a kitchenette with a fridge, a microwave, a toaster, and a sink. So if you're a group who doesn't like to eat out every night of your vacation, would rather order groceries from delivery apps to get sent directly to your hotel, you'll be able to use these groceries 
to make your own meals in a limited kitchen space, especially if you're like me and everything you cook is cooked in the microwave. There are also villa options, which offer full-size kitchens in case you feel like being Remy the Rat whipping up your own ratatouille or boxed mac and cheese, you know, if that's more your style. Along with a personal kitchen, you'll also have access to two balconies, lounging areas, and washer dryer units, which can make or break your Disney state with a toddler, let me say. Now, these types of rooms add to the homey feel of your stay, giving you some more wiggle room if the younger kiddos need to run around a bit or the older kids need some extra personal space. The villas can cost you, brace yourself, between $800 and $1,000 per night during Disney's off-peak season. So let's talk about that room decor, okay? If the boardwalk in rooms don't have Timon and Pumbaa on the shower curtains, then what do they look like? Well, currently the rooms are modeled to match the resort's Atlantic theme, incorporating details from the 1920s and 1940s era. Think wooden fixtures, pale color palettes, mixed with lots and lots of jewel tones. Remember, this place was decorated in the 90s, okay? So there's like dark greens and bright reddy pinks. Looks like my mom's living room. I love her to death, but that's what it looks like. And they also incorporate bold stripe patterns and vintage photos to further complement that antique looking atmosphere. There's really nothing Disney about these rooms, give or take a Mickey Mouse lamp or a Dumbo mural. Sometimes there is a hidden Mickey balloon in the painting. And again, maybe all that's gonna change with the remodel. And although each different room type has its own perks, they also have their fair share of cons to be mindful of. The hallways in the Boardwalk Inn can be particularly long with sprawling corridors that seem longer and longer the more tired you become. And after racking up tens of thousands of steps in the parks each day, it might be disheartening to have to trek down the hall just to get to your room. If you know, you know. Also, I always get lost at the boardwalk. There's like this whole section of the boardwalk that's outside. Like you have to go outside to get there unless you walk in these like subterranean hallways. It's very confusing and I get lost just about every time I stay at the boardwalk. Also, if you're staying in those rooms that you kind of have to go outside to get to, you can't get out of that section without coming back to the lobby. I always feel like it makes more sense for them to have some way to like get out towards Epcot because you're already halfway to Epcot at that point once you've walked the, to back to your room. But no, you have to walk all the way back to the lobby and then back around and go all the way back to Epcot. So it's it doesn't make sense to me. I don't think they're going to change it, but just heads up that it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird setup for some of those rooms that are sort of on the Epcot side of the hotel. Now, the boardwalk itself is stunning. Having a room with a view may not be as relaxing as you think, though. Rooms overlooking the boardwalk can get kind of noisy. Places like Jelly Rolls, which I'll talk more about soon, stay open as late as 2 a.m., meaning there are still people partying it up well into the night. Hopefully those folks aren't planning on rope dropping any of the parks. Lakeside rooms also have great views, but you'll definitely be able to hear the friendship boat horns as they operate throughout the early morning and on into the night while bringing guests to and from Epcot and Hollywood Studios. This is something to keep in mind if you're wanting your kiddos to stay on a strict nap schedule or early bedtime schedule, or both. Or maybe you're looking to sleep in yourself. You are on vacation after all. Another potentially noisy area are the rooms overlooking the Village Green section of the hotel. The Village Green area is where a lot of the resort's recreational activities are held. Though you've got great views of the water, the boardwalk, and maybe even Spaceship Earth, it may not be the quietest of options. Want more of a private experience with plenty of room to spread out? The massive garden suites are too stories tall and feel more like a home, less like a vacation destination. The first floor features a living room area, half bath, wet bar, and queen-sized sofa, while the second floor is the upstairs loft with an elevated king-sized bed, second TV, and a full bath with a giant jacuzzi tub for relaxation to the max. There are only 14 garden suites available, and of the 14, 11 of those have private entrance courtyards, they're super cute, and the other three have private balconies. Each yard has a white picket fence, professionally landscaped lawn, and full-on rose garden. Gardens. These are perfect for honeymooners because again, there's no kitchen in there or anything. It's just like a lot of relaxation area. In order to request a specific room area, you can do so between five and seven days prior to your arrival date by calling the hotel directly. They can't guarantee your requests will be honored, but they'll definitely take your requests under consideration and try to accommodate you as best as they can. Okay, let's talk about where this hotel is. Listen up, Epcot fans. Since the Boardwalk Inn is an Epcot area resort, it's only going to take you like five to ten minutes to stroll on over to the International Gateway, aka the back side of Epcot. You can also take a boat ride over to the park if you need to give your feet a little breather. Disney's Hollywood Studios is also very easily accessible by boat or by foot. It's just a little bit further away. So walking over to the front gate is going to take you more around 15 to 20 minutes instead of just five to ten. The Friendship Boats run from the Boardwalk to Epcot and Hollywood Studios 
videos approximately every 15 minutes. But keep in mind that the boat will also make stops at the Swan and Dolphin Hotels and the Yacht and Beach Club resorts between their trips to the parks. Want to switch things up? The Skyliner is located right outside the International Gateway of Epcot, and the Skyliner not only takes guests to and from Epcot, but also to and from Disney's Hollywood Studios and other Skyliner hotels like Disney's Caribbean Beach, Riviera, and Disney's Art of Animation Resorts and Pop Century. You can also walk over to Disney's Yacht and Beach Club hotels and the Walt Disney World Swan, Dolphin, and Swan Reserve resorts. But let's not forget about the old reliable bus system, which is the only complimentary transportation service the boardwalk uses to take people over to Disney Springs, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and Disney's Magic Kingdom. If you're already in Epcot, you're more than welcome to take the monorail over to Magic Kingdom from there as well. If you're taking a bus from the boardwalk, you'll only have to track down one bus stop, unlike some Disney hotels that have several within an internal bus loop. There's just one at the boardwalk. But be aware that sometimes the bus is shared with Disney's Yacht and Beach Club. Even though you're going to be consistently close to the action of Hollywood Studios and Epcot, the boardwalk still offers a pretty serene environment, aside from the aforementioned 2 a.m. giggling you might hear from the Jelly Rolls crowd. The nautical and beachy theming of the surrounding area feels like an escape from the monotony of everyday life without screaming, you're in Disney World at your face 24-7. It's a chill atmosphere. You really do feel like you're sort of getting away from the parks a little bit. It's an especially convenient location too for rope dropping Hollywood Studios and Epcot to get an early place in line for popular rides like Rise of the Resistance and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. So let's talk perks and benefits next. Disney likes to reward its resort guests with even more time in the parks. Early theme park entry is available for all Disney World hotel guests, giving you 30 extra minutes in the parks before they open for any park on any day, as long as you've got a park pass. Can you get these perks if you book at a moderate resort or a value resort, which is going to be a lot cheaper than the boardwalk rooms? Absolutely. But deluxe resorts get a second big benefit called the extended evening theme park hours, which allows you to stay in the parks after they close on select nights for an extra one to two hours. Again, this perk is available if you stay at the other deluxe resorts too, but since you're within walking distance to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios, you can really get the most of your extra time by staying here if those parks are a high priority for you. Make sure to check the Disney World calendar beforehand to find out when extended evening hours will be available during your visit and where. We are moving on to food. Besides proximity to the parks, the plethora of food options available to boardwalk guests is another huge plus of staying at this hotel. Not only do you have easy access to the dining options at the boardwalk, but the closeness to Yacht and Beach Club and the Swan and Dolphin adds a lot of additional top tier restaurants, ranging from steakhouses to all you can eat seafood. Oh, and did we mention that Epcot and all of its yummy, yummy restaurants are within walking distance? Yeah, I think we did. But for now, let's just look at the boardwalk's specific offerings. For a sit down, table service meal, there are a few different restaurants you can choose from. Flying Fish has recently reopened and serves up lots and lots of seafood, but at a very high cost. It's a signature restaurant. That means it's one of Disney's fancier and more expensive restaurants. It's got a sophisticated atmosphere, but with an open kitchen, so you can see the chefs prepping your meal. But it might not be the best choice if you're bringing kids with you and they can't sit still for maybe a longer dinner. That being said, it's going to serve up a better selection of options than Coral Reef Restaurant in Epcot will, so if your group is craving seafood while you're traveling around the world, showcase, maybe dip outside the International Gateway for a second and dine here. Or you could just hop a bus over to Disney Springs and get some decent seafood at the boathouse as well. Just saying. So Trattoria Al Forno is the place to score Italian food or a nice breakfast. Your kids can even get a Mickey-shaped pizza here. Or you can, we don't judge. This restaurant introduced new menu items last year and we were seriously impressed with lots of the entrees and apps we tried for dinner. Overall, this is a decent Italian place. Is it the best in Disney World? Probably not. You've got Il Molino right across the water here within walking distance of the boardwalk and that's better Italian food, I think. But this is close by and usually easy to get a reservation for. So before Disney World's 2020 closure, breakfast here was a character meal experience where you'd be greeted by princes and princesses like Rapunzel, Flynn Rider, Ariel, and Prince Eric. Character meals have yet to come back to Trattoria Al Forno, but as more dining options come back to the parks, we'll be sure to update you when we see this royal posse make its return. Big River Grill and Brewing Works is another restaurant you can go to at the boardwalk. It's a casual pub style restaurant restaurant with its very own brewmaster on site. The food here is what you'd expect from this type of joint, so nachos, club sandwiches, and burgers. By the way, if you've been to Big River Grill and Brewing Works any time in the last like 15 years, it's literally the same menu as it was when you were here before. In our experience, it's been pretty mediocre. Maybe not terrible, and if you're into beer and want to sample a few, go for it. But I don't think I'd recommend Big River Grill and Brewing Works when you got so much more good food around you. An option on the boardwalk that has yet to reopen is the ESPN Club. 
Club. This is one of the most sports-driven spots on Disney World property, and the walls are lined with a lot of TVs that'll be playing the big games, and the dining room is decorated with, you guessed it, sports memorabilia. If it's game day, this is the place to be. There are even TVs in the individual bathroom stalls. So, similar to Big River Grill, the ESPN Club has pub eats, like fried chicken, burgers, mac and cheese. If you like quieter dining experiences, it's important to know this place can get rowdy during important games like Super Bowl and championship playoffs. Is this the best food you can get in Disney World? No way, Jose. But if you're looking for something simple while staying updated on how your favorite teams are doing while you're on vacation, then ESPN Club gets the job done. We'll let you know a reopening date if one is announced, but since Disney just announced a bunch of new restaurants, for the boardwalk, I'm wondering if maybe one of them's gonna go in here, we'll see. If you're in a time crunch or you don't wanna pay oodles of money for every meal, there are some quick service options here as well. Boardwalk Bakery has menu items like pastries for breakfast, sandwiches for lunch, and desserts all day. We found some great treats here in the past and it's good if you're grabbing a bite on the go. But don't go falling in love with this little bakery because remember that new sandwich shop we mentioned earlier? That addition will end up replacing the Boardwalk Bakery. So if you wanna experience the Boardwalk Bakery before the rehauls take place, you best be doing that pretty soon. Now, if you need pizza, Boardwalk Pizza Window is going to provide you with pizza by the slice or a full pie with varieties like veggie, sausage and mushroom, pepperoni, and cheese. Like Boardwalk Bakery, there's no indoor seating at the pizza window, but you can find a few tables outside. Again, not the best pizza. Wouldn't recommend it unless you literally can't have anything else on the boardwalk or everything else is closed. Okay, Boardwalk Ice Cream is a fairly new addition to the Boardwalk Snack family. It replaced Ample Hills Creamery back in 2021, but continues to provide sweet treats like milkshakes, sundaes, and classic ice cream scoops on hot Orlando days. In true boardwalk fashion, there's a funnel cake cart, though it hasn't yet reopened, but when it does, you can find that classic fried carnival dessert here. There's also the to-go cart featuring other carnival-worthy staples like corn dogs, hamburgers, mozzarella sticks, mac and cheese bites, sometimes chicken wings. And inside the boardwalk resort, you can relax at the Bellevue Lounge. This is a small sitting room type area with tables and sofas for a casual coffee drinking and pastry eating experience. If you need someplace to eat breakfast since the quick service options don't really have a lot of indoor seating, then Bellevue Lounge might be a good place to do that. In the evening, this transforms into a place for cocktails, wine, and beer sipping, but it really doesn't change that much. It's still just as relaxing as ever. Bellevue typically closes midday for a few hours, so be sure to check its schedule beforehand. When it is closed, by the way, this is a nice little secluded place to go take a breather. There's usually nobody over here, so if you are in the boardwalk area and you need some AC and you need to relax, Bellevue Lounge is a good place to go. There's also outdoor patio seating here that you can just go sit outside and relax a little bit and people watch on the boardwalk. Now, speaking of adult beverages, let's dig into Boardwalk Inn's nightlife atmosphere and entertainment options. Leaping Horse Libations is the resort's carousel-themed pool bar where you can find dozens of drink options to enjoy while relaxing poolside. Besides the drinks, you also find small bites like salad, sandwiches, and Mickey pretzels to curb your hunger. Margarita time is here. Boardwalk Joe's marvelous margaritas have about five different margs on their menu at all times, along with other non-alcoholic drinks like the Dole Whip smoothie sometimes. And then we've got Abracadabar. This is a lounge on the boardwalk that has a rather unique story woven through its theming. Word on the street is that this used to be a hop and hangout for magicians and illusionists before they all mysteriously disappeared 70 years ago. There's a lot of detail in the decor of this bar and the more closely you look, the more you'll see. Just check out the framed deck of cards, the shelves of numerous magic gimmicks, and the newspaper announcing the magician's sudden disappearance. This isn't an interactive experience like Trader Sam's Grotto over at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, but the story is fun and the drinks are unique. You can order cocktails like the tequila-based Conjurita, the pineapple and habanero lime Pepper's Ghost, and the mango and rum Magic Mirror. Between 5 and 9 p.m., you can also order a limited selection of snacks like fries and margarita pizza. Now, a quick historical note on Abracadabra. Some of you might remember when this used to be Seashore Sweets. That's right, this was a candy store right in between Flying Fish and what is now Trattoria Al Forno, which used to be Spoodles, Cuisina, etc. This spot was always meant to be a lounge that was shared between the two restaurants. That's why the restrooms are off of this particular location. And it was super weird um, back when this was Seashore Suites and you'd have to come in in all your finery from Flying Fish and walk through the candy store to go to the bathroom. Super weird. I guess what happened was Michael Eisner, when he was CEO, decided that a boardwalk should have a candy store and it didn't have a candy store. And so he got rid of the bar and made this a candy store. And just a few years ago, they changed it back and is now Abracadabra. So there's a little Disney history for you. Now, 
if you're not really in the mood for any of the restaurants I just mentioned, you still have a ton of different options to choose from, thanks to the easy access to the different hotels and the close proximity to Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Don't forget, you can just pop into Epcot if you have a ticket and grab any of the food there in World Showcase. Okay, so you're on the boardwalk, you've explored your room, you've eaten at a restaurant or two, you've had some time in the parks. What else is there to do? Well, lucky for you, there are lots of activities to choose from here. You've got your run-of-the-mill Disney Resort recreational options like campfires and movie nights, playgrounds, arcades. But there are also some more unique options out there too, especially here at the boardwalk, like Surrey bike rentals, fishing, yoga, and tennis. The main boardwalk pool, called Luna Park Pool, has a water slide that was recently reimagined to be the Keister Coaster, which incorporates incorporates the new style Mickey Mouse and the gang. Now, why was this reimagined? Great question, because the OG version of this pool's water slide was terrifying. Previously, the water slide featured just a straight up clown face, like you'd literally get on the water slide and be spat out by Pennywise's long lost brother. I don't know, this resort's great and all, but between the nanny chairs, the missing magicians, and the former clown nightmare fuel, we worry about it sometimes. Beyond the main Luna Park pool, though, there are two other quiet pools with more relaxing vibes and not a clown in sight. Within walking distance of the hotel, you can putt-putt at Fantasia Gardens and Fairways Miniature Golf. There you're going to find two different 18-hole mini golf courses themed after the music-heavy film Fantasia. The Fantasia Gardens side of the course is better for beginners and includes fun fountains, musical stairways, and spooky caves with Chernabog. And the Fairways course is modeled after a traditional golf course with sand traps and bunkers, so keep your group's experience level in mind when deciding which course to choose. Since the boardwalk is within walking distance to Epcot, it's got a great advantage point to see Epcot. Cuts fireworks spectacular, harmonious, but some of the most significant elements in harmonious are the special light and water effects that take place on World Showcase Lagoon. Remember those barges? So you'll be missing the full effect of the show if you're only seeing it from afar. But if you're looking for a less people-y spot to enjoy some fireworks and you don't mind missing some of those main elements, this could be a great option for you. For other types of nighttime entertainment, you can always hit up Jelly Rolls in the Atlantic Dance Hall. If the parks didn't wear you out completely, you can spend the rest of your evening out over at Jelly Rolls. This is a hip-hop 21 plus bar with dueling pianos and crowd sing-alongs. The piano players thrive off of song requests, so expect your night to be filled with a variety of genres of music to sing or scream along to. Jelly Rolls is open until nearly 2 a.m., making it one of the few actual late-night entertainment options in Disney World. The Atlantic Dance Hall is another 21 and over hot spot with a large dance floor to shimmy and shake along to classic songs and today's hits. Maybe I shouldn't say it's a hot spot. It's not really a hot spot. It's usually completely empty, but it's still there if you want want to go dancing. A lot of people actually rent it out for like their, you know, wedding reception and stuff or their birthday or whatever. So make a mental note that these late night options are typically open from Thursday to Sunday. So if you're hoping to check out these party scenes during your visit, hit up these places at the end of the week. And if you're out until 2 a.m., don't rope drop the next day. You're making me tired just thinking about it. And yes, 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 those of you who've been with me for a long time here on DFB Guide know that I used to go to Jelly Rolls all the time and stay there till 2 a.m. and work all all evening, right? That's what I did. I'm old now. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> But if you can, I guess more power to you, but you are making me tired. Now, if you're looking to shop around, there are multiple stores at the boardwalk for any merchandise needs or sundries or snacks. You can also visit the Wyland Galleries of Florida to browse and maybe even buy some classy fine glass art to satisfy your sophisticated taste. That is up to you. All right, so bottom line, is staying at Disney's Boardwalk Inn gonna be worth it for you? When it comes to theming, the boardwalk is a great place to feel immersed in an environment that's classy, but not oversaturated by Disney characters. But if you have kids, these non-colorful rooms, or I guess too colorful, I'm telling you, with those jewel tones, it's a lot. They could be really underwhelming for kiddos though, especially if this is their first ever Disney World trip. And believe me, you don't wanna spend this much money on a hotel room and have your kids be like, bored, right? I mean, come on. That being said, the boardwalk is about to go through some major renovations that could wind up adding a whole new layer of character and fun to these rather plain looking rooms. So if the boardwalk is a hotel you're interested in staying at, you gotta wait your options here. If you want to stay at the resort before all the renovations take place to see it in its original form, then you need to start planning your trip like yesterday. But if you want to stay at the resort after all the renovations are complete, then you probably need to hold off making any plans until you learn some of those official opening dates. By the way, once they revamp this hotel, it might get more expensive. I don't know that for sure, 
but it might, so just a heads up. Now, if you really value the way you spend your time in Disney World, then the transportation convenience and location might be worth it for you here. Having such easy access with multiple methods of transportation to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios cuts down a lot of the time you can spend waiting for buses for these parks. If you're the type to come back to your resort midday for napping and relaxing by the poolside, it's definitely easier to get around here. And beyond easy access to the parks, access to the additional hotels near the boardwalk adds dozens more opportunities for recreation, dining options, and places to explore that you otherwise might not make time for in your already busy Disney trip. If nighttime entertainment is your thing, being within walking distance to spots like Jell-O Rolls and Atlantic Dance Hall might save you from having to find a way back to your hotel at 2 a.m., something I have lots of experience with, and an alternative option for anyone who might love the accessibility and location of the boardwalk, but maybe not the price, should definitely consider a stay at the Swan and Dolphin Resorts. They're just a short walk away, still walkable to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, and significantly less expensive than rooms at the boardwalk. So if you're looking for an old-timey, beachy feel, close proximity to two theme parks, tons of restaurants, multiple transportation options, Disney's Boardwalk Inn could wind up checking off all your boxes. Nestled in between Epcot and Hollywood Studios, the Boardwalk is a deluxe resort with a fun ambiance that offers something for the whole family. And here's a little secret. When I go to Disney World, I usually stay here in the Epcot resorts if I can. They are expensive, but being close to Epcot and Hollywood Studios is definitely worth it. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.